Hey everyone, Spicy Toast Gaming here. I hope you're having a great day. I myself am having a little bit of a mixed day. Uh, last night, right when I was finishing up getting everything ready for the interview, uh, my streaming software crashed. I had to completely reinstall it, and that also wiped all of my different settings to make everything run as smoothly as possible. Uh, this morning, I was scrambling, trying to get everything reset up, trying to remember every single different setting I've had to change for uh, streaming and whatnot. I tried to test it this morning as well, and everything seemed fine, but unfortunately for the interview, uh, it is kind of choppy, the visuals. Uh, so that is definitely very disappointing. So apologies for that. The audio, though, is still fine. So consider watching this interview as a little bit more like a podcast. If you enjoyed the interview, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated, especially right now. It would really help uh, cheer me up after the somewhat disastrous turn of events. I really hope you enjoy it, though, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We have a very special guest, so a developer over at uh, Riot. Uh, Tyler, could you uh, introduce yourself to everyone watching? Yeah, I'm Tyler Morgan, also known as Riot Dirtle, uh, and I'm a senior game designer on Legends of Runeterra. Um, in the past, I worked on a lot of sets, led set eight, um, which is the, oh my gosh, um, Fate's Voyage, um, as well as co-led set six, so the Darken Saga and um, World Locker. Awesome. Well, we'll just jump yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> uh, straight into the question. So up first, uh, you were the main person behind the Constellation update. Uh, that's been out for a couple months now. Uh, how do you feel the launch of Constellations went, and what was your favorite one? I think you're giving me slightly too much credit there. I made I made most of the constellations themselves, but like the, <laughs> the constellations as a feature was definitely a, uh, a full court press. Right. Um, but yeah, overall, I was pretty happy with it. Um, like before it was released, we always sort of stress out a bunch about like, are players going to like this node? Are players going to like this power? Is this going to be exciting? But overall, the reception to it has been pretty positive, and it's nice that. Uh, players sort of have goals again and there's like you know new stuff on the horizon which wasn't true of path for a while um i think my favorite is nora's like uh just getting random champions always feels cool and it feels like pretty much every game i play with her i get to do something new and degenerate in a new way i find that very fun awesome and just just kind of coming to me, uh, I know for like Kaisa, she's a very, very cool and unique uh, fifth star with getting extra mana gem and getting a little bit of uh, flavor. Just mm -hmm. wondering how often can we maybe expect uh, another champion to get that? I know out of all of the ones we've seen so far, uh, she's the only one that actually has that. Yeah. It'll it'll happen sometimes. It's it's sort of just another tool that we have in our arsenal to um, make sure that the champ comes out really satisfying. Like when we were playtesting Kaisa, uh, she was really cool and we really liked the six star power. But there were just situations where she was getting outscaled, um, and so giving her a special fifth star just let us put a little bit more um, power into that package as a whole and. Uh, get her at parity with thralls like that was honestly a lot of the problem was uh things would cap out slightly smaller than a lot of the big failure adventure units and then it doesn't really matter how many keywords you have if you're trying to block a nine nine and you're a seven seven you just you just die well i think you guys um, definitely but... get a did a pretty good job there i recently just unlocked her fifth star and she feels fantastic i really look forward to the sixth star i think there's going to be a lot of crazy stuff that you can do there i think that's going to be one of the constellations that probably surprises the most people i see a lot of people see it and they're like they think it looks underwhelming and i just keep thinking of all sorts of crazy abilities we can do with it so really look forward to getting that one yeah you can do some nonsense uh <laughs> having access to all your keywords like from the command zone is very powerful uh, uh, moving on, though, let's talk about the Starforge Gauntlets. So that was released a while ago, I think like over six months at uh, this point. And at the time, you could only get it for premium currency. And I believe they said, or you guys said that uh, it would be available to get 
as a free-to-play player, whether through like Golden Reliquaries or something like that. So any update on Starforge Gauntlets and when we could expect to see those? Uh, the plan is to do it this year. Um, we the 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 plan is that that and other signature relics will be obtainable through um, an, a new system where like everything would ultimately be uh, obtainable through uh, free to play currencies. But we sort of have to build that system first, and that takes a while. So trying to get it out in the second half of the year here. Okay, good. No. Uh, also, we just want to know. Your thoughts on adding any champions with different win conditions, such as like a Fiora, Rise, or maybe a Soraka with Starspring. I know online quite often, uh, some of us might be arguing back and forth and whether or not we think it's a good idea to add or a bad idea, uh, but we'd just love mm -hmm. to get your take as a developer. Sure. So Rise, I think, is very doable. Uh, he sort of has to stall quite a bit to realize his win con. So as long as like we didn't pour too much fire on there on his powers, letting you get the win condition faster, I think he's actually quite doable. And in some ways, as the game grows, I think it's desirable to have like alt win conditions like that. Um, the the key is that uh, it. It is nice to have locks to some very specific keys. Like if there is a boss that's really hard to damage their nexus, having a few champions that are really good at going around that, uh, I think is a good thing for the game ultimately. The problem is making sure that, you know, that key doesn't fit every lock and they just break everything instantly. So I think Fiora is probably closer to uh, the latter half of that. <laughs> um, if we did Fiora or when we do Fiora, I think we would probably uh, might have to like make an alternate card for her that converts um kills into damage or something like that or give you some way that it sort of still feels like fiora but uh circumvents just raw winning because that is that is very hard to balance <laughs> yeah it's understandable uh, i think it would be yeah pretty good addition for the game overall because for me whenever i look at a new champion i don't really care about how strong they are I more care about, are they adding a new way to play the game? Do they feel different from all the other champions? And so I feel like mm -hmm. some of these alternative win con cham champions would be very good for that and just, yeah, feel very different than any other champion to play. Yeah. For Soraka, I think she probably wouldn't have Starspring in her starter <laughs> deck just because we try and uh, make sure that there are exciting things in the pool of cards for you to get. And like, if you give Soraka Starspring, then she's just going to Starspring every time, and she will only ever be a Starspring bot. But True. If it's like highly ranked in her curated pool, then uh, you'll see it a lot, and you'll get to have that experience a lot. But it won't be the the only thing she ever does forever. I get that. Yeah, I, I knew with Soraka it would definitely be a stretch because it's not just it's not her kit. But yeah, adding Starspring would just make that essentially her kit by default. That's yeah, understandable. Yeah. Uh, you guys have hinted or mentioned some other ways to get constellation materials, uh, such as ways to potentially target farm constellations you want, or adding some new weekly adventures. Uh, any details on those systems, and when we should when should we expect those to get uh, added? Yeah, so the target farming likely comes as part of the same system that would be delivering Starforge gauntlets. So sometime in the second half of the year here. Um, as for getting more constellation materials in general, um, there's two ways that will be coming in the near future that uh, should help that. The first are we're adding the new tier of weekly adventures called Weekly Nightmares um, <laughs> this upcoming patch. And so the uh, higher difficulties of those will have some constellation materials on them. Like the, the middle one has a silver star vessel. Um, and then the um, when event passes ultimately return, those will also have constellation materials on them. Awesome. Uh, the event passes, are those also going to be something coming with like Starforge gauntlets and the target farming, or would that maybe be a different update? Yeah, those, those, the battle pass will likely be out before that. Fantastic. Uh, so for these weeklies, these new sets, uh, how many that like we're getting how many are we getting and like what is their difficulty range? Yeah, there's three new ones. Um, there's a 4.5, a 5.5, and a 6.5. So 
the 4.5 sort of as advertised should be between Aurelian Soul and Lysandra, although there's a pretty big gap there. <laughs> um, so you can expect those to be like uh, quite challenging for three star uh, champions, but potentially doable if you're using like really good epics and stuff like that. Um, the 5.5 is quite hard <laughs> and you kind of want everything that you can get going into those. And then the 6.5s are uh, sort of to flex at the moment. Those are really targeted at you using fully constellationed out champions. Uh, for like that toughest 6.5 then, would we get like a golden star vessel? Uh, it is a gemstone vessel. Okay. Uh, so what was kind of the philosophy going into these new sets of weeklies? What design goal behind them? Yeah, so um, as we were sort of designing out this next tier of difficulty, the thing that we were valuing really highly is consistency and trying to make a consistent level of challenge that will force you to engage with the enemies at least a little bit, right? Like a lot of champions have combos that when left unchecked and or like uh, unchallenged, if you don't have to dedicate any resources to defense, you can kind of just combo through the game and not that much can stop you. So a lot of what we were doing was um, giving the enemy more starting resources in various ways to make sure that you sort of have a problem to deal with um, before you can go off and do your combo or, uh, you know, pursue whatever your win condition is. Um, Swain is a very extreme example of that. Uh, most, most enemies will start with a thing in play and not four things in play, <laughs> but that, that's sort of the approach that we've had. We, uh, want you to still do your cool thing, but we want you to play like three or four rounds of, you know, trading resources first. That's interesting because when i think of the weeklies or like the monthlies consistency isn't really what comes to mind with those normally uh so mm -hmm. seems like you're probably having to make a different group of powers that's going to just going to be for these harder adventures than uh than the normally normal set of weeklies yeah well so the powers are still going to be the the powers and encounters are going to be consistent you know, uh, across the adventure, right? Well, once an adventure spawns, it's going to have the same adventure power. So uh, it will not be consistent from adventure to adventure, but within that adventure, you should be able to learn the encounters, learn uh, how the mutator works, and, like, strategize around that, um, as opposed to something like Lissandra, where the, the different permutations that can pop up can force you to um, change your strategy more dynamically. This is aiming to be powerful but learnable. Um, but there are also a lot of new mutators. I think there's 15 or 16 new mutators that are sort of on the upper two adventures um, that are consistent and <laughs> consistently hard. Interesting. And for the weeklies, I'm not as sure of this. I think for the monthlies, it's more like a somewhat randomly generated amount of challenges with random modifiers. Uh, for the weeklies, is it are you designed it in that same system, or is this going to be somewhat more handcrafted every week with you picking the boss fight and picking the mutators uh, for these harder weeklies? No, it is it is using the existing weekly system. So everything okay. is procedural. We don't uh, manually craft them at all. Um, okay. Yeah. So then we might get some very interesting interesting set of mutators that'll be that'll be fun to check out so that's coming this uh next patch on the 17th then mm -hmm. okay and 6.5 so that is higher than swain i believe swain is just five stars so yep. on average the last two monthly challenges should be harder than swain generally yeah i would say uh, the middle one is probably right about Swain difficulty. Uh, the 6.5s, I think, are generally much harder. <laughs> That'll be very fun and interesting, because that actually somewhat leads me into another one of my questions. Uh, you guys recently put out the Swain adventure, which I really liked. I thought it was a great addition to the game. I'm actually still undefeated with it. Love the adventure, 
But I know the reception online, a lot of people had a lot of mixed feelings about that, uh, that adventure. Just wondering what lessons you guys on the team learned after releasing that adventure and seeing the reception to it online. Yeah. So for the, the positive responses, I think people did respond to the fact that it was very predictable. Like you could learn how the encounters worked. And although it was hard up front, you could sort of come up with a strategy for the adventure and figure out how to beat it, um, which is good because that is the thing that we're uh, doing a lot more of. Um, for the uh, constructive feedback, I think it, it definitely strongly underscored the need to make adventures of you know, different difficulties, we need to have sort of a spread of new content for people to try, because whenever we uh, release something new, people are inevitably going to throw their whole roster against it, because that is, is what they have, uh, regardless of whether that roster is really, like, tuned up to fight it. So the plan for future adventures is to release uh, one that is, like, you know, four stars or less, like, on the standard path difficulty tier and then another version of it that is sort of the higher difficulty that's not going to be true of like the hard modes like swain where we were taking a two-star adventure and making it five star uh but when we make new adventures those uh should be bifurcated in that way right and i think that's going to be very good because that was what i noticed too with the adventure coming out there was a lot of new people to the game that were trying to go into it with a much lower level account and they're having a very bad time and i think if you yeah, are releasing the same adventure but in a lower version so that those people can still be able to play the new content have fun because yeah i understand having new content coming out that is just too difficult for you i i tried to reinforce to many people that like it's a five-star encounter tuned for a five-star champion but yeah a lot of people went up against it with a lower level account and then got destroyed and felt really bad, but understandable. But uh, yeah, I think yeah. it's going to be great going forward once you guys are releasing adventures side by side, or at least the different difficulties of it. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully that'll, that will make everyone happy. Uh, so, so far, you guys have been killing it with putting out tons of good content ever since you've switched over to Path of Champions. And really been blown away. I thought last patch was going to be tiny because we just had the massive constellation one, but we got the whole Swain adventure. Uh, but just wondering what kind of content cadence should we con or expect moving forward? I know previously the game had like a three month cycle where like every three months there was a big expedition with a whole bunch of new cards. Obviously that's not going to be happening, but what type of cadence should we expect moving forward, like new adventure every month, every other month, bundles every month, what should we expect? Yeah, so I think what you've been seeing the last few months, or like um, somewhere between 5.6 and 5.7 is probably pretty indicative, which is that we're gonna have um, at least a new champion with a constellation, plus a constellation for an existing champion, um, and then often something else, but not always. Um, so 5.7 will have big weeklies. That's, you know, a big new thing. Uh, not everything will have a big new thing, but there will often be some extra spice on top of um, the, the two new constellations plus whatever bundles come out with them. So with every patch, then we should get at least like one set of new bundles. I know for the this last patch, Yasuo didn't have a bundle, um, but Swain did. When new constellations are added, is it just going to be like one of them getting a bundle? Or should we expect every champion that gets a constellation gets a bundle? I, I think that uh, our strategy there is still evolving. But <laughs> I would be surprised if we had a uh, patch without a at least one new bundle. Okay. For the foreseeable future. You know? Good to know. And I... As someone that wants to support the game and also power up their uh, constellations, try out the new content, uh, I really am enjoying the fact that you guys are uh, releasing new uh, bundles every patch. And kind of one extra question somewhat involving the bundles, but don't know if you can really talk about this. Wondering about the kind of the thought process behind some of the epic relics coming out with the champions so a lot of them have the like plus one 
mana effect if they're the champion, and then a pretty niche other bonus skill that like anyone could theoretically use. Uh, but recently for the Swain bundle, his relic, you had this very fun drain effect that triggers plunder. So you can try to use this on a bunch of different people. I think, in my opinion at least, the Swain relic was kind of the best designed champion-specific relic you've guys have added to the game with it being usable on a lot of other people, not overpowered and broken like some other ones, but opens up new build path and then extra good for Swain. Uh, can we expect maybe more of that type of relic and less of the plus one mana going forward? Or are you normally going to stick with the plus one mana uh, effect for a lot of these bonus relics? We're, we're still kind of trying stuff out and seeing what works. Um, there is limited design space for what we can do with epics, and we do plan to make a lot more signature relics in the future. Um, so that is the the one difficulty with making everything super bespoke is that, you know, there, there's only so many that we can make like that. Um, but yeah, if Swain's ends up performing, you know, significantly better than the other ones, then you'll probably see a lot more of that in the future. Uh, if it performs about the same, then uh, we'll probably continue to be a mix of those and mana ones. All right, good to, good to know. Uh, recently, you guys put out an article called Constellations and Beyond. And in that article, you mentioned improving the new player experience. Now, I think you guys have already done a great job so far. There's so many more rewards in the game. There's so many more reasons to play. So the new player experience, especially from people coming into my chat, they've been saying it's fantastic. Uh, but I'm just wondering what other plans do you really have to try to improve that uh, new player experience? Yeah, so there's two major problems that we've identified that we want to fix over time. The first is, you know, what you're getting at there, which is it can be difficult early on to get the champions that you're really excited about. So uh, we'll likely be work reworking that flow at some point to try and make it so that people can get the champions that they're excited about sooner in various ways. Um, the other element is that the game sort of throws a lot of complexity at you very fast, like doesn't necessarily explain a lot of core concepts. Um, especially if you're just going through the path experience. So uh, the plan is ultimately to try and build out a better uh, first time user experience for people going through that um, that are new, but that will take quite a while. <laughs> yeah, definitely understand that. And you guys have, yeah, like I said, really done a great job already. So many people, they now are saying like they have all the champions unlocked. They have them at like two stars, whereas before it was taking so long that more reasons to play has definitely done fantastic. Uh, one question quick about the legend level. So cur currently we're capped at uh, 50. Uh, is there any time frame for when that might be uh, increased at all? Uh, something that we're looking at doing in the near future, but haven't set a time frame for it. Okay, good to know. Uh, that's about it for the questions I had. Is there anything you would want to say to the general audience or uh, player base? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm glad that you're still with us. I'm glad that you've been engaging with the game, engaging with Constellations. I really hope that you enjoy Weekly Nightmares as much as I do. Like, as someone that plays a lot, I'm very excited to have just more tough stuff to sink my teeth into, and I, I hope that you will enjoy them as well. Awesome. So yeah, that was it for the questions. Thank you for joining me and thank you everyone that is watching. Also, this will be going up on uh, YouTube later. So if you didn't get any of the, or didn't get all of the interview, don't worry, it'll also be up there. Again, special thank you for joining me, Tyler. And uh, thank you all for watching. See ya.